Hi, welcome to this SQL tutorial video and today we're going to look at while loops. Now a while loop allows us to repeat actions until a particular uh, condition is no longer true. Um, a while loop can be used to kind of uh, be a solution to all sorts of problems in SQL. There's various different ways of kind of using a while loop. Um, syntactically, it, it's generally set up the same way. So I'm going to show you how to create a while loop. Then I'm going to show you a few examples how you can use a while loop. So first of all, let's let's have a little look at how a while loop is is written. So I'm going to begin with creating a, a variable. Um, so I've got a variable called that loop. It's an integer with value one, and then I say while my variable is less than ten, begin and end. And between the begin and end is where you put your logic for your uh, loop. So for a quick example, I'm going to say, show me the value of my variable, and then I'm going to say, um, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, add one to the value of my uh, variable. So this is the while loop. First of all, you begin with a while and a condition. Then you've got your beginning and end, and within that is your looping um, syntax. And then at the end, I'll just put um, got here. So, the what this is going to do is it's going to say, okay, I've got my variable. It's what uh, I've got a value of one. Currently, my variable is less than ten, so I'm going to go into this bit of code here. I'm going to display my variable. Then I'm going to add one to it, which is what this is doing. Then I'm going to go back to the top. Then I'm going to check the condition. This is currently two. It's less than ten, so I'm going to go into here, display it, add a value to it, go back to the top. Three. I'm going to keep on going round. Until eventually, my variable is going to come to here. It's going to be 9. 1 is going to add, be added to it to be 10. It's going to go back to the top. This condition is no longer true. It's going to drop out, and it's going to go further down the code where this select is. So if I run it, we should see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and go here. Actually, I meant to put got here, but it doesn't matter. Um, I could do this. So I add it to it by 2 instead of 1. And if I run that, one, three, five, seven, nine, got here. Uh, I can change that to be zero, zero, two, four, six, eight, got here. So you can see uh, this is an important bit. Making sure that you are adding to uh, this variable is the important bit. The variable that is part of the, the while. If you don't do that, then this condition will never be false and it will just constantly, constantly loop until you, you kind of are forced to stop it manually. So that's very important, this step. Okay, a nice quick example there. Let me show you a few more examples, a little bit more, um, ideally a little bit more uh, uh, helpful. So let us begin here then. I've got two tables. Um, I've got a table called my codes and I've got a table called copy codes. So my codes has got uh, a code value and it's got a table a column here that says transferred then I've got my copy code which is currently blank and what I want to do is one at a time I want to take a code and put it into here and when I've done that I'm going to mark that uh, change that from zero to one to, to indicate that I've transferred the code so let me show you how we do that so I'm going to do uh, another variable called that loop but this variable is not going to be an integer it's going to be a varchar six because that is the same data type as this code here, which is the code I'm going to be transferring, which I'm going to be using. So I will go to here and I will say um, select at loop equals, um, uh, now hold on a second, let me just quickly do from my codes. Obviously I can't put star there, so I'm going to put um, max um, code num from my codes where transferred equals zero. And now I'm going to say while at loop is not null begin end select you are here. So now within this here I'm going to say insert into copy codes 
values out loop. Then I'm going to say update my excuse me update my codes set transfer equals one where code num equals out loop. And now I want to say select. Well, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy that. Um, so, in fact, I won't do that. I'll say um, at the end, we'll just display the values in both the tables. Uh, and actually, what I want to do, just because I'm going to run this a couple of times. Um, so what this is going to do is it's going to declare a variable. It's going to assign that variable a value to say, show me everything. Um, show me the, the, the max code, which has got a transfer of zero. Then it's going to say, okay, if this value is not null, i.e. it has a code in there, then insert the code into the copy codes, update that code now so that the transfer equals one, and then give me the next max code where the trans transfer is zero. And it should go through seven times and eventually copy all the codes into here. So let's just run it. Um, and how like that, let's just run this. So you can see there's the information from our my codes and there's the information from the copy codes. Now, because I've got max, if the, the max code for each time is this, then when that's assigned a zero, it's this. Sorry, a one, it's this. So it's gone in, in this order, um, sort of largest to smallest. So we can change that. Um, so let me just delete that. Uh, and also, I'm just going to update my code to set trans third equals zero. So that we're, we're refreshing the data back to how it was at the beginning. Okay. Um, so instead of max, I'm going to say min. I'm going to run it again. And you can see now, oh, sorry, I've run those top two codes there at the same time. So, but you can see now, um, if we look down here, the codes have been added smallest to largest because I've just changed the, the max to a min. Okay, so that's an example there using um, using uh, a var chart. So let us now think about maybe using dates. So I'm going to declare uh, my date, which is a date. I'm going to say it equals the 1st of April 2021. And I'm going to say while my date is less than the 10th of April, and then I'll put begin and end. And in here, so this is quite simple. This one, I'm going to do it my day. And again, I need to make sure that I am doing some sort of, uh, I'm, I'm adding to my um, looping variable so that it doesn't continue the um, iterate. I'm going to say my day equals date add day one my day. Um, oops. And Date add will add a day to this value, which is my date. So it, it'll begin with the, the value at the 1st of April. It'll enter here and say, oh yeah, my date is less than the 1st of April. It'll go into here, display 1st of April. It'll add a day to it, come back up here. Right, my date is the 2nd of April, still less than the 10th of April. It'll go back through up until it gets to the 10th of April. Then it'll drop out um, and it will get to the last. First, second, third, all the way to the 9th of April, and then there's the last. And it's the same with the with the first example I showed you. You can you know you can iterate by three days or something and run it again, first, the fourth, seventh, and the last. Um the important bit is is that you, you make sure that you are uh, iterating your variable, otherwise, like I said before, you're gonna loop continuously. So the last example I want to show you. Um I've got another table that I've created for this video, type. Um, and it's got a row value and five date values. So I'm going to say, uh, let 
me just move this a little bit further down here. So as an example, I can say, um, uh, insert into loop dates, um, values at loop and get date and then set at loop equals at loop plus one. So what this should do is it should iterate through here um, five times and it should add five rows and in the date one column it should add uh, the current date time. So if I run that oh yeah and at the end I'll just do a snake start from loop date. So uh, I'm going to get rid of that. Get rid of it. So if I run that, you can see that it has added. Um, I mean, it ran like that, so there's no difference, but it has run um, five different loops, and you can see for each loop it's added that and it's added this date time. Um, and there it is. But it's just so quick that there's no kind of. Um, difference between these here because it, it's running so quickly. However, what I want to do is um, I want to show you a couple of things um, here to do with while loops. So I want to say if at loop equals one, insert into loop dates the row date one values at loop and get. And I'm also now going to copy that. Uh, and I'm just going to change this to say if that's two, if it's three, if it's four, and if it's five. And here, two, three, four, five. Now I'm going to run this. And we see we've got the four different rows, sorry, the five different rows, but each row now, the date is going into a particular column. Um, so that's fine. So you can do your, your if statements in here. But what um, what I want to show you, though, let's look at, uh, let's look at a couple of things here, actually. Let's just do this. Uh, or at loop equals four. So if I run this, we've now got a sixth row. So what this is doing here is it's saying, uh, let's just chug all the way down here. If I loop is one, put a value in here. Is it one here? No, it's not. Is it one here? No, it's not. But when it comes to two, it, it gets to here and it adds a value in here. When it gets to three, it adds a value in here and then it carries on. When it gets to four, it runs this and it runs this. Um, so it's kind of it's inserted this row twice because of the if statement. So now, if I say um, begin and end, uh, and what I want to say here is, um, I want to say break. Um, and let me just run this. So what the break does is it will start running through your loops here, but when it hits this break, it will it will stop looping completely. So it will get to this break point here and drop out to the bottom of here, and it won't do any more than that. So if I just tweak this ever so slightly and I just change this from four to be one, if I run that again, one's inserted here through the first loop. And then it's inserted here in the same loop. Then it comes around, then it gets to two, and it gets to here, and it inserts this. Then it breaks, and then it drops all the way out. So if you if you want to kind of run through your loop um, until until maybe a condition's met, or until you've finished running through a, a, you know, a massive table, but if a condition is met within that loop, you want it to jump out, well, break is what you want to do. Now, there's another, um, I've got to be careful with this, but there's another um, thing you can use here called continue. 
what continue does is when it hits continue it it doesn't do any more here and it goes back up to here and it start it, it gets it kind of comes back to this while point here now you've got to be really careful because this continue here is occurring before this um before we kind of messing we're adding one to our variable so what it's going to do is it's going to go one happy another one here then it's going to go back into the loop it's going to equal two it's going to say two insert here i'm all happy then it's going to be here then it's going to bypass all of this code and it's going to go back to here and it's going to say i'm still two i'm less than six i'm going to go down here insert another line oh i'm still two get to continue oops i'm still two and it's going to continue doing that well it'll never stop so you can use continue but you might want to use the continue kind of further down here so you might you might do your set uh, loop and iterate it by one and then you might have some more conditions here to say um well, you know different conditions here where you might incorporate continue but don't use a continue before you've done this otherwise your loop will never end so if i run this now it's never going to finish it's running and it's running and it's running you see it's executing i'll eventually stop it um and if i go down here and i do a select from my loop dates I've got 15,000 rows in here. That's the end of this video. I hope you found it helpful.